Have you enabled the copilot in your Power BI Dex tab? Let's find out. Go ahead and click in a quick measure here. If you still have this particular default quick measure that we have previously, that means you don't have copilot yet. Let me show you how to activate it. Go ahead and cancel this and let us begin the journey. Go to file and from file, you can click on options and settings, then click on options here. Now we have our options, scroll down to where you have preview features and click on the quick measure suggestions. Have it checked. Go ahead and click on OK. So before this can actually start working, you have to actually restart your PBIX, not your system, but just the PBIX. That is the Power BI desktop, right? Close. Just go ahead and close this and that is all you need to do for now. So with the Power BI desktop closed, we are right now in our Power BI service. You have to make sure you are logged in right from Power BI desktop and you have access to your Power BI service. So go straight up to where you have the gear icon right here. And now we have to scroll down until we see the admin portal. So we are on the tenant right here. So look at it. The tenant settings, scroll all the way down until you can find where you have quick measure. So we have our quick measure suggestions right here. Go ahead and open it, then enable it. Click on OK, either the entire organization or you choose whatever you think you want to use. I want to use the entire organization here, apply. So we have one more settings to enable and that is just the Q and A. So we have to disable it rather than enabling it. So we go ahead and disable it, you apply. So you can come back and change the settings if what the copilot is giving you, you don't like it and you want to keep it at default, is your own cup of tea. I just want to show you how this is done. So now we can restart our what? We can restart our Power BI, you know, desktop. Now that we have restarted our Power BI desktop, let us check the Q and A and let's see what we're going to have. So right now we have the copilot suggestion right here. So go ahead and click on it. And there you go. Can you see it right now? This is what you want. So use your natural language, type whatever you want to type right here and click on generate. It's going to generate the measure for you without you writing it. What kind of measure can this generate? Can we try that and see? Let's find out. Oh, let's say your boss says, show me the total revenue of Victor Castro for just Friday, Sunday and Monday. Three days of the whole week. That is nice. So. We don't have to do anything right here. The very thing we can do is just for we to make sure we use the copilot to do this without we writing any single DAX measure. Okay, let's just get into it. So if I click here, we have to understand our data for the first time. So click on the fact table. So we already have the total revenue created, but we're going to assume that we have not done that for now and want to use the copilot to actually do that ourselves. So inside the fact table, we have the quantity and we have the unit price. So aside this now, we have the you know calendar here. And inside our calendar, the weekday has a short form of the weekday, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and stuff like that. So let us now hit here and go to the copilot and see how the copilot can help us to do what we want. Right here inside our copilot, so we want to actually create the total revenue. So I'm going to call it total sales instead of total revenue. I'm going to say, um, for this to actually happen, what I'm going to do is to say, okay, uh, iterate through the fact table and multiply. So iterate through the, sorry for that, the fact table. and uh, multiply, yeah, multiply quantity by revenue. Oh, sorry, quantity by unit price. So let's see this, if this will definitely work. So iterate through the fact table and multiply quantity by unit price. So the right language is what you need to give to it. So let's say this. 
is generating a code for us, a dark margin for us. So let's scroll down. And this is right. So let's go ahead and add. So remember, before you can be able to use the copilot feature, you must first of all understand the DAX measure you want to write, even though if you don't know the whole thing at all. So you just have to know if it is correct or wrong. So now we have an iterator here, and the iterator here is looking for a table. The table is a fact table where we have our daily transaction and the copilot got it right. And we have the table right here. So for the expression, we have this particular quantity multiplied by the unit price, which is right. And uh, now we can go ahead and actually say this one is our total sales. So total sales right here. So we've got our total sales already. So we can now go ahead and push this inside. Let us format it. So click on the dollar sign here and uh, you can choose to remove the extra decimal you have on it. So we can push this inside the card and now solve the main question where our boss says we should actually calculate the total sales or revenue of uh, Victor Castro on Friday, Saturday, and as well for Mondays, right? So I'm gonna put this on the card. So here is my total revenue or total sales, whatever you wanna call it. So now that we have this right here, let's go ahead and do the next one. So click on the co-pilot here. So right on this one, what we are going to do is to actually look at how we can do what our boss is looking for to say. So I'm gonna say total uh, sales of Victor Castro. So let's just, just stop it like this and generate the measure for this. So if I scroll down a little bit, now you have this. Show more. Can you see it now? So it's doing calculate the fact table. Here's total sales. Okay. And uh, which is right. But this particular fact table we have right here is not really important we can have it removed that was what i was telling you you need to know about your dax measure that doesn't mean it's not correct it's correct but it's actually optional to keep it here so if i scroll all the way up right now we have to complete what we want so we are doing this for a specific days in the week right and uh, we're gonna say it's gonna be um to that sales of victor castro on friday so remember it's short form Sunday, short, and uh, Monday, right? So we already have a suggestion. So choose the best one and click on generate. So let us look at what we have right here. If I scroll all the way down now and show more, so we're gonna have something like this. Re let us add it and see what it is right on the measure here. So here we go. I will come back to here, but first of all, let me just name this one like um, Castro Sales. Hit my enter key. Let me step out before we come back in because of this particular bit visual that covers most of our codes. Okay, now we can go here and uh, locate where we have this particular merger right in. So if you look at the measure, it's something very, very interesting to read. So here we have this particular fact table right here, which is not really important because this is a measure. We can have it removed. That was what I was telling you. You need to know, uh, know your, what do I call it? You need to know your DAX a little bit. Don't give the work to the copilot to do for you alone. So the key filter here is fine. If you take it off, it's gonna work. And uh, we have this. So if we were to write this from the scratch on our own without, you know, using what the copilot has given to us, what do you think we can do? Different than what the copilot has done. So the copilot just said, okay, calculate for this particular weekday on Friday or on Sunday or Monday. So the pipe here means all, right? So if I were to do this, I'm gonna do something different. Let me copy just this particular part away from here. So copy, 
So I'm going to have this inside a card. So let us have this inside a card. It's 4 million, right? So I'm going to drag it down. So this is what the copilot has generated for us. So now it is time for we to create our own. So new measure. So if we were to do this without the copilot, what would I've done would be this. I'm going to make sure this one is two to differentiate it from the copilot's on. So right here, I'm going to do shift enter, tap to indent it. I'm going to use the calculate function just like what the copilot has done. Shift enter again. And uh, for the expression, it's going to be my total sales this time around. Total sales, my comma, shift enter. Then the next thing is for we to use the first filter. Please pay attention to our intelligence right here. And that's going to be my manager. And the manager is going to be equal to uh, Victor Castro here. Make sure it's correct. Comma. Then the second filter, shift, enter. That is where it's going to be our weekday here. So remember the weekday. So the weekday is going to be not equal to this time around. We want to use the in operator. So the in operator will definitely do the magic for us and all of that. So use this bracket type. And uh, now we're going to say Friday, close comma, shift. Then close the, open the double quotation again. So this is going to be Monday, close the double quotation, comma. And finally, we do uh, Sunday. We close this and we close this. Shift, enter, close. In case you've not seen this done before using the in operator, let me show you what the in operator does here. The in operator is actually saying, okay, fine. I am going to go ahead inside this particular calendar and I'm going to go into this column called weekday and I'm going to scan through to see if there is Friday. That means it's going to be true. If there is Monday, it's going to be true. If there is Sunday, it's going to be true. But if either of it is some kind of absent, that one is going to be false. I am not going to calculate for it. You get it? So if I hit my enter key right now, this should definitely give us something that is 4 million US dollars, just like what the copilot has actually generated for us. So this is what I would have done without the copilot. Let's find out. So I'm going to bring this into a card. Okay, so now I have this right. So if you think it's wrong, that is not. So that was because we did not actually remove the two decimal places we have right here. Put zero right there and hit my enter key. That will give us 4 million US dollars. Can you see that right now? This is awesome, right? So the copilot and what we have done is actually the same thing. So we have just verified if the copilot could do something very, very amazing. But I'm going to bear to you. The copilot cannot do what the human mind can do. Let us take, for example, if I go to this particular dashboard here, I have something here that is going to be some kind of a mind blowing. So here we have this chart that has this particular slicer, this slicer and this slicer here. So in this slicer, we selected salesperson. Let me just make you see it better. So in this particular slicer, we selected salesperson in this here. If I click on this, it's going to give us the product and uh, we are seeing the top three products selected. Here, if I select this one, it's giving us the top three, you know, product groups selected. If I select the button, automatically it's going to change and everything I have right here will definitely change. And I can decide to see the top four by shifting this, you know, and all of that. So there is a particular measure doing this particular work behind the scene. And that measure is nothing but this particular measure we have right here. Let me click on it and let me show you what it is. So can you see the measure right here, right now? This is exactly what the measure looks like. Can you see it? So now it will be difficult for the you know copilot to be able to work and create something like this for you. So all the copilot could do is to just help you to guide you through what it is that you want. You are still a master of the art of writing measure. Don't be scared of what the copilot is here to do. The copilot is only here to aid you. So use it to learn, use it to actually create something very smart and all of that. So right now, 
let us write one more, you know. Okay, inside the copilot here, I'm gonna ask the copilot to give me the total transaction we've had all time. Okay, what I'm gonna do in that case here is for me to actually clear this one off. And uh, it will definitely say, okay, you know what? I want you to give me the Twitter transaction of hard over time. If I say Twitter transaction, it wouldn't know what is Twitter transaction. So you have to understand your model and all of that. So I'm going to say, um, count, um, okay. What, okay, let us use the question. What is the numbers, numbers of, rows in the fact sorry for that fact table so this should be controls fact table close and all of that so let's find out if that is true so if i scroll down now can you see it now we can go ahead and click on add and this is gonna be another you know uh, measure and that is coming cool right so can you see now it's just doing the count rows flag table and now it returns two six zero zero nine six right so let's go ahead and find out if that is true two six zero zero nine six and uh, here we are inside our fact table and it returns beneath it here it returns two six zero zero nine six rows which is awesome so can you see it right now? Go ahead and try how to use Copilot and what Copilot could actually do for you. We have actually tested Copilot in different way and it has returned what we want. So if Copilot does not give you what you want, that means you don't have the column that supports what you're looking for or you don't know how to frame the question to make Copilot generate what you want for you. So Copilot is here to live. So make sure you take advantage of it. Try to check and do some you know thinking give it to actually generate the code for you don't just basically feel like okay it has done it for me i don't need to learn that no use it to learn that and keep learning that